Hey everyone, Calvin here. In this video, we'd like to talk about what's PhD, who should do PhD, and who should not. I'm speaking from my personal experience and understanding only. This by no means is complete, comprehensive, or correct. This is just my personal opinion. Most people when they hear PhD, they would think that it is an excellent proof of one's ability, achievements, and intelligence. Now let's see if that's true. To those who don't know me, I got a PhD in neuroscience from UBC at age 27. Then I was young and I did not think thoroughly about it. its meanings, its impact, its uses, until the recent two years. I just followed the established career path in biology major. I went to graduate school for a PhD and then went to pursue a postdoc. A few months into my postdoc, I decided to switch my career from biology to IT. For most people, it's a huge change that they would never imagine. And don't even mention implementing it. After that, I started to gradually think more in depth about what it means to be a PhD and how to better contribute to society with the skill sets that I picked up during my pursuit of the degree. In other words, I've been thinking about how to take advantage of my academic experience and the degree. Below is what I have thought so far and I hope you will enjoy watching. PhD, Doctor of Philosophy is the most common degree rewarded at the highest academic level following a course of study. It is different from professional doctors such as medical doctors MD, Jewish doctors JD, aka Doctor of Law. Because PhD degree is a research degree, those who are studying for PhD are required to produce original research that would expand the boundaries of knowledge normally in the form of thesis or dissertation and defend their work against a group of experts in the field. That's exactly what I did to earn my PhD. I studied Huntington disease at cellular level using electrophysiology and immunocytology on cell cultural models and brain tissues, published several original research articles in peer-reviewed journals, wrote my dissertations and defended it in front of a group of professors successfully. That was back five Five to six years ago. Based on all these descriptions, you can tell that there are two groups of people. Those who are suitable for PhD and those who are not suitable for PhD. Of course, there are another two groups. Those who are not suitable for PhD but pursued it. And those who are suitable for PhD but did not pursue it. Now let's talk about the first two. Let's talk about who is suitable for PhD and you'll know automatically who is not. Let me list a number of characteristics that a successful PhD has and normally would be satisfied with their lives during and after PhD. I call it don't do a PhD unless list. This is because most people do not do PhD. According to some statistics, on average about 1.1% of 25 to 64 years old people who have been to a university have a PhD. So PhD is rare, especially considering the percent of people who actually go to your university. Here's a list of countries with highest portion of 25 to 64 years old with doctor degrees. This possibly has surprised you. Now let's talk about our don't do a PhD list. I personally think that if you are not okay with three out of the four points listed here, you should consider another career path. You don't want to be those people who are a few years into their PhD, started realizing the difficulty of doing PhD and regretting it. If you are three to four years into your PhD, it will be too early to graduate and too late to quit. So don't do a PhD unless number one, you really like science. Obviously, if you don't like science and if you do not enjoy process of scientific discoveries, you'll suffer a lot and experience a lot of pain as the processes of scientific discoveries become processes of discovering your dislikes. If you do not like these processes from the bottom of your heart, I would say do not do it just because you want to be famous in your circle. Otherwise, halfway through it, you realize you don't like it and start regretting it. If you realize your dislike one to three years into your PhD, it's fine. You still can try to graduate as masters. If it's one year or less into your PhD, you can easily quit. 
However, if you are four to five years into your PhD and still struggling to graduate, it will be really hard to make a decision because it will be too late to quit or graduate as a master's and too early to graduate as a PhD. Luckily, I'm one who always enjoys scientific discoveries and I never regret or doubt myself on getting a PhD, at least when I was pursuing it. And there are a lot of people like me. In my personal opinion, these people are suitable for getting a PhD. Number two, don't do a PhD unless you don't need to worry about income or salary. Most PhD students and candidates when pursuing the degree are either paid by the school or department where teaching assistantship or research assistantship or funded by scholarship provided by school or government such as NSERC and CIHR in Canada. During this period, you'd earn about 25 to 40K to cover your tuition fees and your living expenses. Some scholarships are designed to give you a certain amount of living expenses on top of covering your fees and tuitions. For example, I was receiving a scholarship called 4-year scholarship provided by the school, which was to give me 18,000 Canadian dollars a year on top of covering my tuitions and fees for 4 years. And I was lucky and my advisor is generous. She gave me RA research assistantship fund on top of that so that I could comfortably live in Vancouver. Otherwise, living in Vancouver with 18K a year is very hard. And it started becoming even harder because things are getting more expensive. $18,000 a year in Vancouver for a family with kids would be extremely hard, especially if your partner is not earning any salary. After PhD, most people would pursue postdocs, especially in biology field. A postdoc salary in Canada and US is about $40,000 to $50,000 a year. No need to pay tuition or fees. Oftentimes, it's a contract, not a permanent job. When most people start their postdoc, they're about 30. When I started my postdoc, I was 27. When you are 30, you are about to start a family and raise kids. With forty dollars to $50,000 a year, you cannot provide an affluent living to your family and to your lovely kids unless your partner is earning more than $100,000 a year, at least in Canada. Don't even mention the unpaid overtime work that you have to put in at nights and over weekends. This also steals your time with your family. It would be worse if your partner is also a PhD or postdoc who is earning a comparable amount of income. It would be even unimaginable if your partner is unemployed. Your financial health would become very fragile. Of course, in Canada, the government will help you and make sure you can survive. But aren't you a PhD? A PhD is supposed to earn more than, not less than the average, and not struggle to survive. Unless you are the only lucky one out of 10 postdocs who eventually got a job and become a professor after five to seven years of postdoc work. What I mean is the days of financial struggle, even after PhD, is endless. One possible reason why you don't need to worry about your financial is probably because your family can support you. Maybe your father owns a company in Germany, a mansion in France, or a large land in England, or a few towers in New York. In that case, you don't need to worry about your financials. Or if you are married to a rich family's kid, I think most people don't fall under this category and have to fight for it themselves. Number three, don't do a PhD unless your industry values your PhD highly. These industries indeed exist. For example, if you are a machine learning PhD graduate from Stanford, you can easily get more than a dozen job offers with salaries ranging from $200,000 to half a million dollars a year. That is definitely a great choice for most people. Unless you are a Elon Musk or Bill Gates type people who can build companies worth billions of dollars. But if you are a biology PhD like me, then you will have a hard time getting a decent paying job in the industry. Biopharma industry mostly needs experts of immunology, pharmacology, and cancer. They rarely need people who are expert in electrophysiology, like me. Job market of biopharma industry is quite saturated, therefore the pay is not so good. Postdoc pay is even worse. That's one of the reasons why I had to switch to IT, where it's much easier to find a decent paying job. Certainly, I like IT too, and that's another reason. Number four, also the last one, is that don't do a PhD unless you are comfortable working with fewer people. 
Most research work is done in a quiet place such as a lab, an observatory, or in an office. For example, most biology work is done in a specified and certified laboratory space. It can be done on bacteria, viruses, plants, animals, cells, tissues, or other living organisms. The work is so detailed and complex that not many destructions are allowed. And there wouldn't be many people around you who would talk to you all the time or for most of the time of a day. Because everyone has their own work to do and has their own schedules for the day. They would talk during break, over lunch, or during a lab meeting. Most of the time you're doing your own experiment in a specific room where that kind of experiment is planned and designed to do. For example, if you are an astronomer, you would most likely going to stay a lot of nights alone doing your observation of the sky, performing your measurements, and taking your notes in an observatory. Another example is when I was doing my postdoc. Although it was short, most of my time of a day is spent either in a room with a large water pool or another room with shock boxes. Both were designed to test mouse memory and forgetting after various treatments. Pharmacological, genetical, both rooms smell like mouse shit. No one would come into my room and talk more than a minute while I'm doing experiment. Because the experimental animals are not allowed to be distracted by sudden voice or light. So research work is good for people who prefer a quieter workplace, but not for people who prefer to work with people and communicate with people all the time. If you are businessman type people, salesman type people, or leadership type people who have to talk to other people all the time, then you probably don't like doing a PhD. I'm kind of in between these two types, that's why I enjoy both. However, after switching to IT, I found myself more and more like working with people. And my social skills have been improving a lot. A lot of time you cannot shape your work, but your work can shape you. If you try to shape your work, you're most likely going to lose it. And these are four points that I can think of as of now. And I think that a successful PhD should have at least three out of the four. I mean, in my opinion, you have to be okay with at least three out of the four in order to consider PhD as your career path. If not, I would suggest you to consider another career path. That's all I want to talk about today. And in a future video, I'd like to talk about how much a PhD earn by industry. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and click the like button if you have enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell, that way you wouldn't miss my new videos. Thanks again for your support. As always, I will see you next time.